In this video, I want to go over some Leafeon gameplay. Currently, one of my favorite builds in the entire game is Solar Blade. Leafeon, we play with the Tech Bait, Body Barrier, Energy Amp, and there's a lot of things you can do wrong and right on this character, so that's uh, something I want to talk about. In general, how you play it and how you recharge your Solar Blade, because there are a lot of things people are not aware about. First up, of course, we uh, we can go towards lane. I do like it a lot in lane, because Solar Blade in level 4 is amazing last hitting. Early game Swift can also last it quite easily. So playing the laning phase is totally fine. Top or bot path doesn't matter. You can also play central, of course. But in general, just playing it towards top or bot path is very, very decent. So I'm going to go over here, look for a stack. We get level 4 very fast. If I can get this last, we're already almost there. Trying to go for it. There we go. Do a swift into quick attack at the same time. To hopefully get the last hit. And we're level 4. So solar blade is activated. And now we can even go for more last hits quite easy. We have to charge it up. And after it reaches that, like, half past, we max out the damage. So you have to charge it up normally. But... If your boost auto attack, which is that yellow line under you, is fully charged up, you can do an instant solar blade. So right now it's fully charged up. You can see the yellow bar and that yellow icon there. So we can do an instant solar blade. How do we charge this up? First, we charge it up by getting sunlight. So not being in tall grass. You can see it slowly builds upright. And then we can also get it by hitting our second move, which later is going to be the uh, leaf blade or the leaf tornado, whatever you want to call it. The one where it spins around. And that also builds up our passive. And um, there's a few things as well. So Solar Blade, if you charge it up like this, has a 7, 6 second cooldown. But if you do an instant Solar Blade, it only has a 3 or 4 second cooldown, depending on how high level you are, right? So you can see right now, if you charge it up manually after this lands, it has a 7 second cooldown. But if you, during this time, your passive shards up, charges up fully, you can see if my yellow bar charges up, you get current reduction on it. So either every time you either use a this version of the Solar Blade, or it fully bits up again while it's being on cooldown, you also get cooldown reduction. So right here, for example, as well, if you Solar Blade, now it has a much lower cooldown. So we're going to try to steal away. There's a Solar Blade. Now it only has a 4 second cooldown. And now if we bit it up again with our Leaf Blade instantly, we can do like a Solar Blade into Leaf Blade into Solar Blade very fast. Depending on how many characters you hit on Leaf Blade, your Solar Blade and your passive also bits up faster. And that's a lot of things why Ace is also still better. I saw some people try Ace and, and you know, and Solar Blade in the same build. But Leaf Blade just allows you to have many more Solar Blades in teamfights, which just feeds much, much better. So again, if you charge it up, you don't get current reduction. But if you build it up now, I'm going to just Unite move in already because I can run down the Inteleon. And I'm already level 8. And you can just Unite move pretty much every time Unite move is up, you're going to Unite move. You're going to score some more points right here just to build up or Unite even faster again. And then we just try to look for, you know, buy toys or Atari on the map to build up or Unite move again. Very fast. So that is very important to play around your, like, understanding how Solar Blade cooldown works. So right now, if you hit multiple targets, you can see we build up our passive much faster, not fully, though. And if we use a non-empowered Solar Blade, it has a higher cooldown. But again, you saw it there. As soon as, I'm just going to show it one second, so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see right now, um, I use a normal Solar Blade, right? This is a normal Solar Blade right here. And this one doesn't get cool reduction. Even if, I, even if I fully charge it to the half point, right? If I fully charge to the half point, it doesn't get current cool reduction. But now you can see it, my bar is about to fill up. You can look at this bar right here. I mean, you can see my cursor, right? I don't have my pen on right now, but you can see my cursor, right? It charges up, and as soon as we hit the max and we, this pops up, you can see our, our solar blade gets current reduction again. You can see it now going over, and bam, our solar blade's instantly up again. So you get like three or four second cooldown every single time your solar blade um, goes into this kind of state, which is very, very important, and that is something you have to play around. We're going towards spot path now, um, all my Unite next Unite's almost back up already again, so we are doing absolutely insane right now in this game. Almost level 10 for a lane as well. We're playing, uh, you know, top path leaf here, not even central area. And I'm going to be a bit aggressive now, using my leaf blade to build up my passive, and then just losing, using solar blade for damage. Going for the Azumel right here, jumping away because I'm a bit scared right now. Um, I can Unite move the Azumel if I want to. Right now I'm toy grass, so I have to charge up my thing manually. If you Again, if you're in toy grass, you cannot charge up your passive. And now we do an Insta Solar Blade. We do end up falling, but we do a lot of damage. And you can also, so there's two ways of using the Unite move. First off, you just Solar Blade instantly into Unite move to just one shot someone, or you know, Unite move first into Solar Blade. Then you also get energy amplifier damage onto the Solar Blade. It depends on what, if you want to surprise someone, right? But if you do like a Blade into Unite move first, some people might get surprised by it and are not able to respond in time. We sadly ended up losing this fight still. And me, I'm going to get this Reggie right here, so I'm just going to take blue buff, farm my next Unite move up. We pretty much just want to play around our Unite move as much as we can. That's the most important thing as well on this play, or like on Leafeon in general, and on this build, is just playing around our 
Unite move. Because it has such low cooldown, so we just try to look for every single farm we can find. You can see in this scenario right here, this is exactly the perfect example. If Leaf Blade hits multiple targets, you can see how fast it builds up, right? So right here, you can see my passive. Um, I'm going to show okay, like this is a bit difficult. But you can see my passive right now, right? The yellow bar is only here. And if I jump in now, hit my Leaf Blade on multiple targets, you can see how fast it builds up. And then our Solar Blade is already instantly up again, and we can just use it and do a lot of damage. End up falling here as well again, just didn't have enough damage. My Unite move was almost back up. I thought I could maybe get it for this fight if I get those Ataria, but it was a bit too close. Now running back top path, building up my uh, Leaf Blade by just running around or my Solar Blade. Jump forward. Here I just look for the engage and I do a Solar Blade after my Unite move. We charge up the next Solar Blade looking for the Intellion and we also get the Azumaru in the bush. Also, it's very important. <laughs> we do get sniped here. I actually died a lot this game. Um, so, it's very important in this build not to use your boosted auto attack much. Because your boosted auto attack will just ruin your Solar Blade. And uh, you can only decide between one of the things, right? You can only decide between either an instant Solar Blade or getting your boosted auto attack out. So, in this build, you will try not to boost auto attack a lot. Try right here. This would be my boosted auto attack, but I don't want to use it because I want to have an instant Solar Blade and I want to have the cool reduction for my next Solar Blade, right? So, it's very important. Not to use your boost auto attack, um, pretty much ever, unless your someone is running away and you have nothing else and you just like need one point and click, guaranteed move to hit. Then of course you can do it. Otherwise, you always want to make sure you use your solar blade with your boost auto attack. Looking for a kill right here. Unite boost already up again. We just do a solar blade into leaf blade, jump very deep, unite move, and everyone dies. We can also do instant solar blades without charging it up for a bit of damage as well. That's also totally fine. So if your solar blade is not fully charged, you just do a quick. You know, charge up for half a second, bam. You still do a good amount of damage with it anyways. That's also totally fine. Mating the bush now, we have the objective spawning very soon. I'm um, this guy face check, solar blade into leaf blade, some basic attacks. And it's gone. And then we can head towards this Reggie, which we're going to get very fast. Lapras takes me onto the taxi towards top path. And my unite's almost back up, so I'm just like, okay, I'm going to get my unite move very fast. So we do this very fast, and this is the combo as well. Like you can see how fast you can solar blade, leaf blade even in team fights. Just imagine those were enemy Pokemon, right? So right here, your solar blade, right? You hit your solar blade, you leaf blade a few targets, and you can see your solar blade is instantly up again. And that's what you want to look out in team fights as well. You want to do a solar blade, leaf blade, solar blade as fast as you can by hitting multiple targets on your leaf blade. Again, looking for some damage right here, just jumping in with my Ignite Boo forward. Building up my next solar blade here, just an instant one. For some reason, the Venusaur is going getter, so we can't quite do it, or we can't quite stop it. This time, I have to manually charge the next one up. Guy's yeah, still running away. Gonna secure the KO there. He didn't have to eject button, but it's gonna be up for Ray anyway, so why not? Charging up the next solar blade. We jump in. And yeah. Charging up the next solar blade. Try to hit. It can be quite difficult to hit if you know if the enemies see it coming, so that's always a bit scuffed. And now we just defend the very Jileki, and then we build up our next Leaf Blade already, or our next um, Unite move already again. To make sure we get also 15 le le level 15 right here is quite easily achievable, so... Farming 15, farming my Unite move back up, and then getting ready for the Ray fight. So nothing is really gonna happen right now. I wanna be here in position for this Rayquaza, of course. And let's see if someone face checks. So we can either otherwise do Unite Move into Solar Blade for energy amplifier damage or not, but yeah, often I just, you know, like, I like doing the Solar Blade first very really fast because people can't react too much in time. Now we're just waiting for the engage. I'm building up my next Solar Blade by standing out of Toy Grass right now. I'm looking for the engage on Leaf Blade in, and this is the Unite Move into the Solar Blade. And you can see the Intellion just co got completely obliterated. Completely obliterated. So right now again, you can see how much distance I can gain as well. I Leaf Blade forward. Right, I leaf blade forward, I, get, I unite move onto the backline right here, and you can see how much damage this Intel is about to take. My unite move into Solar Blade, and he's gone! Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> very, very fun. Charge up next Solar Blade, bring it to the leaf blade. So many blades we have to talk about, and now, of course, we know to start up Ray. And again, it's very awkward though sometimes, because you can't use your boost auto attack. Like in this scenario, I just have to use my Solar Blade, and otherwise, my boost auto attack is going to make my Solar Blade much worse. I'm gonna charge it up again, waiting for the next one to pop up right here, and then we just wait for the last hit, and we get it before Venusaur is back in time to snipe it. And now, of course, we can just go score some points. And yeah, I hope I hope this uh, video was helpful. <laughs> this solar blade damage with uh, Rayquaza is also quite hilarious. And again, in this scenario as well, like if someone is low on HP, right, 
you can just do a quick bonk like here you don't have to fully charge it up right now like in this scenario right now right if someone's this low on hp you don't have your passive fully up you can just do a quick solar blade without charging it up it will still you know it still does 1100 damage so it's still a good finishing tool you know it doesn't matter what and then uh we score some more points right here and then this is the fun part as well you see the, the, the ignite movement to solar blade damage one more time just showcasing how much damage it really does to a squishy unite move solar blade and he's dead so yeah pretty fun game of leave you on there was a bit difficult but end up with 150k damage hope you guys enjoyed this video hope it was helpful it was don't forget to like and subscribe